Hey everyone, welcome in. Thank you for joining me. My name is Marlene and I am with A Room to Bloom. So I just did a short video and I used a deck called Loving Words from Jesus. And I wanted to extend the message and go a little bit further here with this. Um, and I'm going to start with the first card that came up. Um, and what it says is, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And that comes from Mark 4.11. And as I was making the video, I was holding up the card and I was saying, that's information, right? 411. And it's like <clears throat> saying, yes, there is information. Jesus has um, like acted as a medium, right? In many ways to bring this information to the collective, the human collective, to bring a deeper understanding. But we can also seek out that information. But what's, what's interesting is, you know, I quite often have um, 1225, right, pop up on my clock um, or my phone or whatever it is. And, and I know, the, of course, the first thing we think about is Jesus. And it's like this little, this little beautiful light nudge, a little message that says, I am here. I am always with you. You are not alone. 1224 comes up. So I'm sorry I'm feeling that because I, um, I'm not really sorry, but I pick up the emotions of um, the collective. And so I know that there are people who are watching this today who are feeling that. And so when you see that, just know that that comes into your presence to remind you of that. And so if it moves you deeply, if it brings you to tears, if you um, have a good cry, it's because you needed a good cry, right? You needed that push. You needed that breaking up of what could be stuck energy, stuck emotion in your system, right? And so... Um, I also wanted to talk about another thing that, that continues to come up in my experience. And I, and I just think it's, it's always beautiful, right? So for instance, someone texted me, they needed, um, the size of my, the furnace filter in my home. And so I went to check. The furnace filter size is 12 by 25 by one. And so I'm just going to put those words out there and I'm gonna let you interpret that, right? As far as that goes. Now I'm gonna go a little bit further though. So when we look at a filter, what does a filter do? A filter helps to purify the air of sort. Even though it's not an air purification system, it does help to purify the air, to take out and filter out what is, you know, not serving us, right? Which is not helping in our life, in our breath work, right? It takes out kind of the gunk out of the air and out of, in, and out of our experience, right? And so when we connect with and we seek for guidance, that's a confirmation, and we seek for guidance, guidance will be brought in front of us. And we simply have to be in this space of the present moment to see it, right? Now, I am going to give you an example. I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't have more examples in front of me, but I do like to keep them. It's just this kind of unfolded like this now this morning. But in an example, let's say that you are grocery shopping. Just start looking at what you're buying. You don't have to buy it because of, but you, you are magnetized to certain things that have 
messages for you on your journey, on your path in that exact moment. And I'm getting confirmation with that, okay? So, um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm going to go a little bit further with the cards, but I'm just going to give you an example. So on the bottom of this box, for instance, there's a number, right? Now, this is not about going through everything in your home and <laughs> start going, okay, that's what I'm going to buy because that's what, you know, it has 12 by 25 on there, right? Um, but the universe is speaking to us. And what is the universe? It is an God. It is energy, right? It is a the source of all that is, right? Um, spirit speaks to us through different ways. Angels and guides put things into our awareness, not that we're necessarily digging for them, we just kind of look at something and there it is. So like when you maybe go to recharge your phone and you go to plug it in and whoop, 1225 pops up on the phone. What is that telling you and or what would you do with that situation? Would you feel very moved? Would you ask, what would you like to speak with me about? What would you like me to know? How, what would you like me to do, right? And to, you can think those questions, you can ask those questions, how would you like me to serve today, right? And then get quiet, be patient, and, and then pay attention and see what starts arriving in your experience. And you will be notified, if you will, however that comes through. Um, so as I was speaking, when like another phone goes off or like the coffee pot shuts off or the refrigerator is going on and off or the, you know, the air or the furnace, whatever, these are all different signs and ways that spirit works to communicate with us on our journey. Um, songs on the radio, receipts, trucks that go by, uh, signs on the road, a phone call from someone who says something either that you needed to know. Um, they might just be on the phone to start a conversation because they know that you need to talk about something, right? And that they, they can kind of fit something in there. But there might be a conversation which something is not said and you pick up on that as well. You're picking up on that in between um, energy, right? Okay, so let's let's keep going here, and we're gonna. There was that first card, though. <clears throat> On to you. It is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. The mystery. So seeking out the mystery, seeking out the information, right? It is given to you. All right. What else do you have for us here? We have give, and it shall be given unto you. Luke six thirty eight. So here, um, oh, I'm just full of goosebumps. Jesus is holding out his hand to a branch that has three little birds on it. Now, this is coming up often in my presence, right? Three little birds. In fact, yesterday I drove past, um, and a message yesterday come in, and it was two wires. There were two birds on one wire and one bird on another, as if, Oh, interesting. And so you see how there are two birds that are close together. One's just a little bit further away. Like there is another, another one coming. This could be a third child. This could be um, another experience. Let's just hold that. There is a, pi uh, a picture that holds water in the background, right? In between those, um, in that doorway or archway, I guess there. All right, what else do we have here? Who, I'm sorry, whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. That's Matthew twelve fifty. So, um, there was a point where, I don't know if it's in this, to be honest with you, but I just I just read it <laughs> not very long ago, but where um, Jesus uh, was told, your mother and your 
your brother are here and he said everyone who is here to like take in the word and to listen to the word um is right my brother and sister in the kingdom so that's what he was getting at and i love this the, the you know here they're they're just very happy they're having a um a heartwarming conversation right Okay, we're going to go, I'm going to take one more. Love one another as I have loved you. So here Jesus sits in a field with the shepherd's <clears throat> hook and there are um, people around. There are mothers with children. Uh, there is a child whose hand, you know, holding out a bouquet of pink roses to Jesus. He has a smile on his face. So this is just like, be caring um, and kind to each other, right? Um, as I have loved you. And that is John 13, 34. I already know I'm supposed to take one more. So I'm going to take one more here. Judge not that you be not judged. That's Matthew 7, 11, right? So um, in our life circumstances, we may have judged, right, in our past, but we are being encouraged to let any of that um, type of judgment go that we may have had. Why do people judge, right? Um, Oftentimes it's out of fear because they don't know someone, something, they don't understand it um, because it is different from what they know. Um, I just spoke on this that I was watching a television show called Arranged and it was about arranged marriages in three different um, types of circumstances. One was an Indian wedding, one was a gypsy wedding and another one was an, an American arranged wedding, right? And so, um, you know, you see a lot of the tests and challenges that each of these couples go through, uh, settling in with their new families. Um, but oftentimes it is, it is simply because there is something it's, it's different and we don't know it or we don't understand it. Um, and trying to be respectful of others' um, ways of life, you might say, right? So letting go of judgment, accepting people for who they are, where they are on their journey. Um, because again, when we do that, then we're not being judged either, right? Because really what's happening is when we judge others we're simply judging ourselves. so this is about learning to love yourself every step of the way on your journey all right i have a prayer card here i'm just gonna pick well i'll shuffle these let's see what comes up all right what would you like to show us here for a prayer today But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. That's Psalm 13:5. So if you are unfamiliar with that, maybe this is just a little bit of a nudge to, to, to read that a little bit more, right? And when you see that 12:25 on the clock, or as I spoke in the short, like 12:24, it says something miraculous, something wonderful, something life-changing <clears throat> is coming into your life, into your experience, right? And so 1224 is like this precursor of, if you will, right, to prepare. There's something, something wonderful that is happening. Okay. Um, or that you are birthing or that is coming to fruition, that is coming into creation. All right, so with this being said, I'm going to move to this book called God's Roadmap for Life by David Borden and Tom Winters. Let's see what message comes through. What would you like to show us for the collective today? Okay, it says, um, this comes from the category of love. It says, an impenetrable 
Impenetrable Fortress. It says, when love is a decision that you make with your mind, it bends your will to a demonstration of virtues such as fairness, dependability, honesty, cooperation, and charity. In that temper of love, you treat people with a consideration respectful of the common thread of humanity that binds you together in the cosmos. It is a respectful, though distant, kind of love. But when love is born of a determination within your heart, tender emissions of genuine concern spring from within your soul, reaching beyond the surface of shared origin and into the depths of spirit. I think that's really interesting because we have the shared origin and where it was like, judge not that you not be judged, right? So when we are from different walks of life, if you will, right? This love rests upon something more formidable than feelings. It is an impenetrable, okay, can you tell that I haven't had enough coffee? Impenetrable fortress built upon faith. It is an un rivaled commitment to those with whom you share the Lord. In other words, inspired by the love with which you have been loved, you loved others, you love others. Loving another deeply from the heart means more than well wishes. It means a proactive disposition which moves to relieve the heartaches of others, reaches to bear the burdens of others, and sacrifices to bring joy to others. This love does not exasperate when neglected, nor does it make demands. It hurries to make amends for wrongs committed and does not hold those things in remembrance or recall them for the sake of retribution. It harbors no grudge, seeks no advantage, and finds no fault. It isn't jealous over time or attention because it is entirely forgetful of self. If you want to love sincerely and from the heart, you'll have to dig deep, get honest, and give up the habit of loving yourself most. Interesting. Um, I still look at this as yes, but we still um, have to work on um, looking at the self and filling up our cup so that we so that we, we have to self recognize. When, when are we able to, to give, to do to, for others, etc., in the physical manner, right? And when do we need to step back and recharge? And Jesus did that many times. He stepped back, um, disappeared for a while, right? Reconnected, recharged, right? And then came back out and then, because his cup was full, right? It says, my precious child. And by the way, I know that... Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's in Corinthians where it speaks of like what was towards the end here, right? Where it speaks of love not being boastful, etc. My precious child, your right to think that love is something you can't fake. You know it isn't real. And the other person can see through flimsy deception as well. It's time to face the fact that there are just some people you will never be able to love on your own that is. Even when you try to clothe yourself with love, sometimes you have to grow into the clothes. Still, you do have options. When you find yourself in a situation in which your love, however well intended, falls short of the mark, ask me to love that person through you. Make yourself a channel for my strong, supernatural, eternal love to flow through you to the person in question. Do that long enough and you will find your own ability to love deepened and purified, says your loving father. That is so beautiful, isn't it? It's like just wherever you are in your day, especially if there are a lot of people around you, just taking this moment and sending out healing prayers for those that are there, right? for those who are going through struggles, for those who are suffering, for those who can be hard to love, right? But doing that and allowing God's love to flow through your being, or my being, right? Allowing God's love to throw, 
flow through our being, being used as a conduit. Or in other places in the Bible, he speaks about being a reed, right? Um, being that empty reed so that, that that information, that everything just moves through and out, right? Um, there are many people who channel um, information, but they don't, they don't really remember what they channeled. Right, so you, you can kind of get to the speaking place, and it's like um, you can feel that it is. It's it's like yes, it's your body, it's your you know your physical attributes are moving, but these words, the this um, emotion, etc., is coming from a higher place, a higher source, right? So that's really quite a. A beautiful message I'm just gonna mark that page there all right so let's see I'm gonna go to a deck here called kindness changes everything oh you know what that's not what the deck is called that's just what's on the bag <laughs> this is the truth totem it is the white buffalo truth totem so let's see what messages come through here <clears throat> That would be helpful for you today. What do you have for the collective that would be helpful? The yellow heron. Okay. You are free to be all that you can be. With patience and persistence, you are a gentle teacher. Realize how valuable, valuable you are and seek creative inspiration. You transition with ease, comfortable in spaces that are neither here nor there. It's okay to be alone and to choose when to seek the company of those that support you. Stay grounded, balanced, and happy, right? So just like Jesus would do, he would leave. He would seemingly, for others in the human experience, look like he might be alone, but he's never alone, right? He was never alone, um, and neither are you. We are never alone, although it may look like that to others, and it may feel like that in our physical experience, but we are never alone from a spiritual perspective, ever. Yellow is a power. It's a color. Ooh, I have goosebumps. Um, it's a color. It represents the solar plexus, and it's about standing in your power. Okay, one jumped out here. We're going to take that one to come out. It is the white whale. It says, listen to your inner voice. Your reality is connected to your thoughts and emotional choices. You have buried some feelings deep beneath your subconscious. Embrace clarity and navigate through confusing seas of emotion into a more refined state of being. Sing the song of your soul and claim the destiny that is yours, right? Look at how pretty that is, the rays of those light, um, the light rays coming down. So in order to listen to your inner voice, you do have to get quiet, right? Um, can get out in nature, but turning off the electronics, right? Just being with the self, it can be as simple as just coloring, um, but being out in nature will help you listen to your inner voice. Uh, be aware, I do want to say this, so sometimes when you are doing that type of thing outside, and if you recognize um, others coming in to disrupt your connection, it's about discernment and being aware of who is coming into your presence to interrupt that, right? And it also, these are challenges to teach us about going deeper within and not paying so much attention as to what is going on out there. But sometimes it's like, okay, I see this, right? I see this, this message. So I'm going to go within more. I'm going to step step aside and get uh, more into uh, stillness, right? Okay, the next one we have is the Purple Robin. Sing your songs. We have two of these about singing your song. 
for a new period in your life. The correct path has been revealed. Embrace the growth and renewal in many areas. Make changes with joy, laughter, and a song in your heart. Remember, spiritual fulfillment comes from expanding your awareness and connecting to your higher consciousness. Ride the winds of passion within your heart. So the purple does represent our intuition, right? When we talk about our, our higher self or our, our soul self, so if you can imagine um, a balloon, and that's like representative or, of our soul, or say a hot air balloon, right, um, for instance. And that's like our higher self. But if we were to let some things out of that balloon, but imagine that and that, that little bit, it's like the bit of our self, right? That small self, this is who we are in our human experience. The spirit comes from our soul self. And it's like we have this, this um, silver the silver string always connected. And so when we're connecting with our higher self, that's the, the string, if you will, that we are looking to follow to see things from a higher perspective, to tap into uh, higher learning, higher um, wisdom, knowledge, whatever you, however you want to word that, right? To connect with our source, right? Okay, the next one is the purple snail. So we have two cards of intuition. It is time to expand your awareness. So <clears throat> things are coming into fruition. Be vulnerable and bring your inner child out of its shell to experience the magic of life. When things fill off, it is okay to find a quiet place to reside and to heal. So again, just what I was saying, if things fill off, um, in an example, one time I went to a beach. It was very quiet, right? And there were many big umbrellas on the beach already there. And literally it was myself and a couple people. And out of the whole beach, this other person and her kids came and sat right next to us. And so um, two things are happening if that doesn't feel right, it's okay to move and get some space, if you will, right? To reside and heal. Um, because others can and will be attracted to your light and to your energy and will want to feed off of your energy if you maintain a high vibration. So it's about learning how to recharge and hold your energy, right? Slow your pace to authentically enjoy and appreciate the small things. Be compassionate with yourself. Stay grounded and find joy in the present moment, right? So that snail is saying slow down. Slow down a little. It's the, um, what is it, smelling slow down to smell the roses. I can't remember how that goes, but it's that same thing, right? Do you just run past? Like here we are just entering the summer season. Um, you know, it's a time of flowers are, you know, in bloom. Do you just run past them or do you just slow down and like appreciate the beauty? I just posted a couple of really beautiful flowers on the community page. You might go and see those and look at the intricate detail, right? That God creates in these um, patterns of the universe and they come out in the flowers, right? And that's one way, right? <laughs> okay, and the next one we have is the green beetle. Now the green represents our heart chakra. Get to the root of your desire. Rid yourself of thoughts that don't support you and release unhealthy attachment and identification with false reality. Trust the process. Embrace the flow of life and all of its transitions. You are a natural peacemaker and you have the ability to love unconditionally. Sometimes you feel small, but you are able to move mountains, right? Um, so this is asking you to sit with yourself, right? And, and ask, what is the root of your desire? Now, you do not have to share this with everyone. 
You can keep them private. You know, you can have a vision board, keep it private. It doesn't have to be out for all to know because there are people that have envy that, that don't always wish well upon you in your journey. So keeping things close to your heart, right? But understanding what is the root of your desire and ridding yourself of thoughts that don't support you. Release unhealthy attach, attachment and identification with the false reality. So you have to discern or determine what in your life is a false reality. The present moment is the sweet spot in our life. Anything that is tomorrow is out there. Anything that happened yesterday is gone, right? Um, but yes, what happened yesterday, we may have emotions that we still need to process that are still with us. But once we learn to move at a bit of a slower pace or process things at the pace in which they are coming into our experience, we can clear out this, this vessel, if you will, of what does not serve us and release things that are not helping us on our journey. Okay, so one other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a message from this book of mindfulness, How to Pay Attention to the Present Moment by Wendy Hobson. And this is the book. It has a butterfly on it. So I'm getting a disagreement on this, but let's see what comes up. It speaks about controlling pain, and we have blue on here. So blue speaks of the throat chakra, and yellow is about the solar plexus again. And the chapter is four. It says physical pain is controlled in the brain, which communicates through the central nervous system so the, to the areas of localized pain, as well as pain caused by damage of some kind, of, kind to the tissues of the body, sprains, bruises, cuts, breaks. It is possible for tension and overstress to be the cause of physical pain. Because what's happened is we have uh, now I want to say overstress. So when we are stressed mentally, emotionally, right? That makes us feel at dis-ease. We don't feel good, like right? We're not comfortable. But if we don't deal with that uncomfortableness or stop stuffing things down, stop running away from them, not dealing with them. It can cause disease that will manifest in the body, right? So we're looking to avoid that by doing the healing work on a regular basis because of the experiences that we have. have. Okay, I'm going to read this again. It is possible for tension and overstress to be the cause of physical pain. It can also be the case that pain is experienced in a different part of the body from where it originates. An uneven gait, bad working posture, or severe tension can result in back, neck, or headaches, for example. The mindful approach is to calm the brain waves through meditation, which can help ease the pain. It also encompasses our attitude to the pain in that it will encourage focus on the moment rather than the ongoing nature of the pain. This enhances the brainwave patterns that strengthen positive thought and distract from the pain itself. It is the case of tension headaches and other pain created by overstress. Meditation should help to relieve tension in the body and therefore take away the cause of the pain. In addition, of course, you shouldn't be under the care, I'm sorry, you should be under the care of an appropriate medical advisor and many people will feel guided, I'm sorry, will find well-guided exercises useful, okay? Um, I also, again, this communication color. You really have to ask, if you have been feeling physical pain, okay? You really have to do two things that will be helpful. I don't mean to say have to. You can. <laughs> and that is 
spending some time with paper and pen and asking where are you hurting emotionally, mentally, spiritually? You already know physically, but you can still write that down. But where are those hurts? What have you not dealt with? And you can categorize that by periods of your life, like five-year increments. So starting at whatever age, zero to five, five to 10. And what starts coming up that maybe you remember that you didn't really process and, and then start looking at that. And what were the circumstances and putting in forgiveness, releasing that pain and looking at it. Um, these can be small visits back to things or they can take a number of times to revisit things. Um, are you carrying like anger, frustration, shame, guilt, regret? Um, inner inner child healing, right? Things that come up from, from our past that we just stuffed, we never dealt with. They can manifest and they're connected to the chakra system and each chakra is connected to various parts of the body. So for instance, if you had a whatever, if, if you had something that was sore in whatever, say, say an, an ear or shoulder or whatever, this is more than likely correlated to your throat chakra area. So asking yourself, was there someone who tried to shut you down verbally? Was your voice heard? Did, were you able to speak up for yourself? Or do you way over communicate, right? Um, because you felt like your voice was never heard. So now that your voice can be heard because someone isn't shutting you down effectively, right? This is learning how to come back into balance and saying, I don't have to share everything in my life. These are my emotions and my pain that I'm just letting out to everyone. And, and so your thoughts are creating your reality. Your words are kind of adding to that, right? And so asking yourself, what words have you been thinking about your pain? What thoughts have you been thinking about it? Joe Dispenza is an excellent example. If you look at his story, what happened with him, um, and he got his mind wrapped around this, and he he was healed, right? And so it's 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 quite quite a story. I'm not, you know it's not my story to tell. Um, but you could look into that, and, and um, he's a wonderful speaker telling about his experiences and how we got to where he is um, through really just sending, right, that healing to every cell, every, every atom in his body, right? Speaking, speaking healing words over himself. Anyway, so that is it for this uh, reading. I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope the messages were helpful, hopeful, and healing for you today on your journey. Take care.